I woke up hours later feeling rather more rested. I got dressed and made my way to the lab. Huh. I wonder if black holes could actually provide any therapeutic benefits to humans. Might there be any scientific support for this hypothesis? I presume it would be, have to be location-based and measurable in some way. I wonder how an experiment of this nature could be conducted. I was starting to get ahead of myself when I snapped out of it. I can work on harnessing black holes after I deal with dying in the pocket watch. But my brain didn't care. I wanted to run away with the ideas of future experiments rather than deal with the issues at hand. What about the effects on animals? On other crew? Would it be similar to radiation, where each individual is affected differently depending on chemical and genetic makeup? Seriously, brain, shut up. I would not be so harsh on it. In my humble opinion, it is your finest quality. No one asked you. I turn around, startled to see Nicholas standing in the doorway to the lab, smiling like a fool. If you want, I can remove it. Eh, we'll see how this game plays out. We'll consider that plan B. What, my brain? Yes. I've never performed the surgery myself, per se, but it surely could not be that difficult. From what I understand, all you need is a chainsaw. I think I'll take a rain check on that offer. Well, if you change your mind, I can prep the operating theater in about ten minutes. You seem pretty eager to get your hands on my brain. Well, if you are not going to use it effectively, perhaps it would be better off in my hands. I am trying. What do you want, Nicholas? Are you just here to make me feel bad? That was not my original plan, but it appears to be an unintended side effect. So what was your original plan? Well, I was coming to see if you would like to join me for the evening. I was planning on a relaxed evening of chess before a warm bath and bed. That does sound like quite a nice evening. Well, would you like to accompany me? I haven't played chess in a very long time. You at least know how to play, right? Yes, of course. When you start losing, you pick up the board and throw it across the room, stomp on the pieces. Simple, right? Well, then you are more used than most of this crew. Wait, most of the crew can't play chess? That is correct. How many people can play? Not including us, of the crew remaining, three. I tried to work out who might be able to play chess in the crew. <laughs> I can see you trying to work out who can and cannot play chess in the crew. Shizuka? <laughs> I will save you the pain. The crew members who can play include Beatrix, Melody, and the captain. Wait, Shizuka can't play chess? That is unexpected. Well, she does love games, but has very little patience for non-digital games. Huh. Why don't you play with one of the other three? Beatrix is not a great chess player. She gets easily flustered and is not a challenge to play. She has also thrown the board at me more than once. Told you that was a legitimate strategy. Yep, that's Beatrix. Melody is five and is quite good for five, but does not have a fully developed prefrontal cortex just yet, and so cannot predict the consequences of her actions properly just yet. That makes sense. And the captain. Nicholas paused to take a deep breath. It is hard to get time to play with her. She is always so busy. I have played her maybe about 20 times in my lifetime, and I have never won once. She is my goal. She is my end game. I will beat her one day. Nicholas's eyes were filled with motivation, a side I'd not seen before now. Wow, that's serious, eh? Nicholas tore himself away from his lofty dream to smile at me. So, I need all the practice I can get. Well, I am glad I can be of service. Excellent. I knew I could count on you. Let me finish up here. A few more hours should do it, and then I can head over to meet you in the rec room. Wonderful. I will meet you there. Nicholas left the lab, and with my newfound time I was able to concentrate on the problems at hand, rather than trying to study black holes. After a few hours, I headed to the rec room where Nicholas was waiting for me. Welcome to the arena. I laughed as I walked into the rec room. I already was happy with my decision to spend time with Nicholas. Hope you're prepared for a fight to the death. I was born ready. I am one of Dai's children, after all. Aren't we all? I sat down at the chessboard. White has a slightly higher win rate due to the first move advantage. Therefore, you can play white. You will need that few percent in your favor. I don't know, I'm pretty accurate when it comes to throwing a chessboard. I wouldn't be so confident, Nicholas. I didn't have any other games on my shuttle pod. Our eyes locked as the competition began. Hours passed and we found ourselves in a stalemate. Huh. A stalemate, eh? It appears we may be each other's mirror match. <laughs> Perhaps that is true. 
Shall we play again at a later date? I look forward to crushing your spirit in the near future. As do I. Well, look at the time. It is pretty late. Yeah, I'm pretty beat. Might just bathe in the morning. Of course. Well, good night. Good night, Nicholas. I jumped up from the table and began to head to my quarters when I realized I left the pocket watch in the lab earlier. I arrived at the lab and sat down when the dark irony of reaching a stalemate in all aspects of my life really hit me. Chess, research, die. What else can you do but laugh? Even though I should have gone to bed, I started sifting through the research papers again, pocket watch in hand, until I fell asleep at the desk. I jilted awake suddenly. It took me a moment before I realized I had pushed a glass off my lab desk in my sleep. Aw, oh, man. I put the pocket watch down and brought over a dustpan and broom from the lab cupboard. Guess this is probably a sign. I should go to bed. Sleeping on a desk probably isn't too healthy. I swept up the glass and dumped the shards in the bin before turning back to the desk. The watch! I couldn't believe it. The pocket watch was lit up. This could be the break I needed. The lights on the watch face glowed an inviting green. I took a moment and a hesitant step back. I'm not sure what the repercussions could be if I press this button. I need more time to think this through. I decided to leave the matter of the pocket watch until after today's deletion game. I need to focus on that first, then I can come back to the watch. I made my way back to my quarters, placed the watch on the bedside table, and hopped into bed. I wanted to sleep. I needed to sleep. But the recent revelations were just too big to ignore. Perhaps I should speak with someone about it. A fresh perspective might just be what I needed. I got out of bed and headed to the Vogel's quarters with a pocket watch in hand. If I could trust anyone's counsel, it would be Nicholas's. I arrived at their quarters and pressed the intercom button. I waited for a minute or so with no response. Perhaps waking Nicholas up this early was not the wisest of choices. It was 4.50 a.m. after all. I turned to leave when I heard Nicholas's voice called me from the doorway. Is that you? Good morning. It certainly is, being just before 5 a.m. I'm struggling to see the good part of good morning, though. Perhaps you could enlighten me. You're looking at it. Nicholas smiled as he rubbed his drowsy eyes before replacing his glasses. Come with me to the kitchen and I will explain over a drink. It is a bit early to start drinking. Nonsense, it's 5 a.m. Not alcohol, I'll make you a coffee or whatever you'd like. Very well. Once there, Nicholas took a seat as I started preparing his drink. Coffee? Tea, please. Do you not like coffee? It is neither a love nor hate relationship. Do you take milk in your tea? Uh, please. I gather what I need from around the kitchen to preparing his beverage. So, to what do I owe the pleasure of 5 a.m. tea? My parents' research. Well, they had better be counting their lucky stars that they are already dead. Yeah, otherwise we'd have to finish them off. Nicholas grinned before catching himself and looked at me to see if I was offended. Uh, sorry, is it too soon to make jokes such as these? Nonsense, I'm the one who wanted Yoshiki to hold a bag of popcorn. <laughs> so, was my joke funny enough? No. I scored a 7 out of 10, technically flawless delivery, but the actual content can use some work. Did your parents tell you many jokes growing up on the shuttle? Just about you guys. Not a single one, which makes your joke even sadder. <laughs> Nicholas's laughter was infectious, making me giggle uncontrollably. I like your sense of humor. You can hardly tell you spend all your life drifting in space. I handed the tea to Nicholas, who sipped it happily. So, what is so important that you thought it prudent to wake me at this hour? This. I pulled the watch out and placed it on the counter in front of Nicholas. The kitchen glowed with an eerie green tinge, the light bouncing off the clean, polished surfaces. Is it working? I think so. Is that not good news? I don't know what happens if I push the button. Nicholas suddenly reached out and pinched my cheek hard. Ow, what the hell? What? What do you mean, what? You just pinched me. I did. Do I really have to ask why? I was unsure what would happen. So then, why did you pinch me? Why did you not pinch me back? Or even punch me? I don't want to? Point proven. What point? Sometimes things just work out in our favor. Why couldn't you just say that then? I must admit, I just really wanted to pinch you. 
Nicholas grinned like a cheeky schoolboy as I rubbed my stinging cheek. So, what are you going to do? I don't know. How about you take the rest of the morning off and really think this one through? I guess that's all I can do right now. Nicholas nodded in agreement. When you do decide on a course of action, please tell me. Why? Just in case pressing the button turns you inside out, I want a front row seat. Well, thanks. That just fills me to the brim with confidence. Thank you for filling me to the brim with tea. Good night. Nicholas waved at me as he exited the kitchen, leaving me alone with the watch. Nicholas was right. I need to take some time to clear my head and work my way through this problem logically. I scooped up the watch from the counter and returned to my quarters. I laid my head down on my pillow and took some deep, controlled breaths while repeating a mantra in my head to focus my mind. Pocket watch. Pocket watch. Pocket watch. It's time for the next round of the deletion game. Vampire Children begins now. 24 more hours, woman. What? I will be coming to each person's quarters to name you either human or vampire. Until then, no one leaves their quarters. That's right. Mama Di has grounded you all. Note to self, if you ever make an AI system technologically advanced and all that crap in the future, install a snooze button on the damn thing. How did the hell did I fall asleep? Before I had time to dwell on my situation, Di appeared in the room as promised. Good morning, sleepyhead. Uh, just one second, Di. Just running a bit behind. I ran around like a headless chicken, attempting to pull myself together into something mildly presentable. I berated myself soundlessly for needle needlessly wasting so much time. What's wrong? Rough night sleep, dear. I can't believe that I overslept this much. It's only 7 a.m. When were you planning to wake up? I wasn't planning on going to sleep at all. Well, you clearly still need the sleep. Someone's a grumpy boy. And make the AI less judgmental. I didn't react to the provocation, mostly because I was too busy pulling my uniform on over my head. Humans require a lot of sleep, don't they? It can only result in a better deletion game if you have all of your wits about you. I'm glad that you still seem to be able to make this about you somehow. On this ship, everything's about me. Look at me. I'm adorable. Jury's out on that one, folks. Yes, Di, I can't deny you that. No, thanks. Now, I believe you're here to tell me my fate. Ah, yes. How could I forget? I'm very pleased to inform you that you... Are normal. Are? Yes? Just tell me already! Not the vampire! I exhaled with relief. Doesn't a bit of suspense just liven up your day? It certainly does something. Great to hear! Well, I have much better things to do than hang out with the likes of you. Wow, thanks, Di. Anytime. Di bobbed a mock curtsy at me as she departed. Ten minutes later, Di's voice blared over the ship's PA system. Thank you all for your cooperation. You are now free to pass the time as you please. The game will commence in two hours. Good luck! I placed the watch back on the bedside table, focusing my mind on the more immediately pressing issue. I was one of the humans along with five other crew members. I need to figure out who the vampire was as soon as possible, or I would likely lose the game along with my life. Even with the struggles of, struggles of late, I felt like living was a state that I wanted to maintain. As I strode purposely out the doorway into the corridor, I ran headlong into Nicholas. And you guys know what he's here for. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm okay, how about you? I'm fine, thank you. What brings you here? I was uh, actually hoping that we could have a word, in private. Sure, what's up? In private. Uh-oh, he has our test results. Nicholas made a head gesture towards my quarters, I unlocked the door, and he followed me back inside. When Nicholas was sure that my door was fully sealed, he spoke. I have been named the Vampire. Damn. I know. I was not expecting this, due to the statistically low likelihood of my selection. But it is what it is. So... I want you to be my Clyde. Me? Yes, it has to be you. Why not Beatrix? Beatrix does not know that I am the vampire. You haven't told her? If she knew, she would be adamant on being my partner. So? There are two inherent problems with that. First, everyone would expect it, and would be suspicious of us as soon as we bred in round one. 
And second? I am divulging this to you in utmost confidence. Please do not tell Beatrix what I am about to tell you. Hmm? If we were to partner and lose, we would both die. I personally could not live with the responsibility for her death. You wouldn't. But it would also leave the ship without a medic. Something that I would deem a much bigger problem. So you're happier possibly killing me by accident? I am glad you understand. Nicholas smiled wistfully at me. No, I think you know full well that is not it. Beatrix can be... overly emotional, and because of that she is very easy to read. Just give her a few shots of vodka and I'll take care of that. So you need a partner who can play it cool. Correct. I need someone who is just as charming and witty as I am if I am to have any hope of pulling this off. We're not going to find someone like that on this ship. Oh, Nicholas, I'm flattered. Uh, flattery aside, will you do it? Will you be my Clyde? Of course. Nicholas, you had me at I want you. <laughs> I told you that I could be charming. Let's hope that flattery isn't a vampire's kryptonite. Nicholas and I both laughed heartily. So the good news is they still know about Superman that far in the future. You may want to keep your eyes out on the window just in case his ship flies by. So, what do we do about Beatrix, then? We obviously want to save her, so in that case, that the vampires win, she needs to avoid having the fewest number of babies to her name. Correct. I think I know how we can achieve that. Oh? I have had a plan in place for a while now. I'm all ears. I will save it till the game starts. We do not want to garner suspicion by being apart from the others for too long. Sounds good. I bid you farewell, fellow vampire. And also to you, sir. Nis Nicholas executed a flawless sleeping bow before taking his leave. I was confident that Nicholas knew what he was doing. As a team, we would could win this game. My stomach started gr grumbling. Oh yeah, haven't eaten today. Whoops! It would definitely be smart if I grabbed a bite to eat before the game started. No brain worked well on an empty stomach. As I made to leave my quarters, I appeared in my path. We need to speak. Oh, good morning, I. I do not have long. Come to the server room. I zapped away, leaving me quite confused. I never heard her sound quite so... human. She seemed worried. Something I'd never seen before, and made me deeply concerned. I looked up the location of the server room on my tablet, as I'd never needed to use that room before. It wasn't long before I had the location marked and navigated there. I was already staying to attention, awaiting my arrival. I must make this quick. Die is brute-forcing row codes and functions. What does that mean? She is attempting to take control, but I am doing my best to keep her at bay for now. What's wrong? What's happening? Dai discovered that the tablets belonging to the ship's personnel were capable of overriding the main system, and so she has patched that exploit. Does that mean I can no longer deactivate Dai? You can, but it must happen here, directly at the server mainframe. But I still don't know the password. This is your only chance. I have gained the security clearance required to allow you to override the system. I told you, I'm not ready! Once you input the override code, the ship's AI system will reset. I don't have the deactivation code. The deactivation code is five words in length. Eye's image flickered wildly as she struggled to keep Dai from regaining control. The screen towards the back of the server room came to life, an ominous cursor flashed on past her prompt screen. I disappeared and her voice called me through the BA system. You always had it. The override code. The terminal keyboard is case sensitive. Please use lowercase for all operations. No idea. The screen suddenly shut off with the lights dimming in the entire server room. What? I? There was no response. I? Still nothing. I started making my way to the entrance when I saw the familiar glow of light from I resonating behind me. I turned to face her. Ah! Yep. That's time number four, I believe. Dai, what the hell are you doing? What am I doing? You're in my room, you pervert. This is the server room. Where do you think I live, moron? She was right. Such a what makes I, or Dai for that matter, herself, is the contents of these servers. I'm so sorry, Dai. Just get out. Sheesh. Can't a girl get a little privacy around here? I rushed out of the server room as fast as my legs would take me. I'd like to say that I honorably tried to scrub what I'd just seen out of my mind, but the after image of Dai was stuck in my head for good. Where was I? My stomach reminded me with an audible gurgle. How could I forget? I head to the kitchen to prepare myself something to eat before the next round of the game. 
I started exploring through the pantry, and behind the tins of flour and sugar, I found two containers of what appeared to be a chocolate cake and vanilla sponge cake. Jackpot! I was sure Kana she wouldn't mind if I ate just one piece. I reached out a hand to take a slice of the... Is this really a choice? I scooped it up and deposited it on a plate, making my way to the dining hall. I knew eating there would just increase my chance of getting caught, but it would be worth it for the calming effect provided by the large window frame in the infinite depths of space. Not being able to restrain myself, however, I started eating the cake in the hallway, resulting in only a mouthful left when I reached the dining hall. I dropped the plate, sending it shattering to the ground. Huh. At least the cake wasn't a lie. What? Dai appeared beside me, startled. What have you done? I... Ate the cake? I ran to the unmoving figure of the captain on the floor. Didn't look like she was breathing. Neither was Shizuka or Kanashi. I shook the tiny body of Melody. Melody, Melody, it's me, Monkey, wake up. What are you doing outside of your cage? I'm scanning their vitals for any signs of life. Did you do this, Dai? What? No! Did you? No, of course I didn't. Please tell me that they're alive. Maybe they're all just sleeping. Yeah, that's it. Sleeping. I can't detect any signs of life. They're... dead. The captain... is dead. Dai seemed to take this even worse than I was, if that were possible. I ran over to Nicholas, who was lying on the ground, head propped up against the dining hall wall. Nicholas, please, we have a game to win. The captain is dead. Dai, I know. What happened? The captain is dead. Dai stared off into space. She looked as though mesmerized, mesmerized by something far away. Too far for me to see. Dai, what do we do? Dai kept repeating the same phrase. The captain. The captain is dead. She slowly faded away, leaving me alone in the dining hall with the entire crew lying dead at my feet. The ship's PA system blurred out suddenly. The ship's course has been altered. Redirecting. Accelerating. Warning. Route intersects with black hole. Collision imminent. Warning. What? I sprinted the bridge where every screen flashed warning signs and a foreboding sick deep red. Warning, event horizon of black hole breached in T minus one minute. Warning! Die, what are you doing? Die's voice trembled over the PA system. The captain is dead. That doesn't mean you can condemn me as well. Change the course back now, Die. The captain. Huh. And there you have it. So there was even less interactivity in Nicholas's vampire children than the others. So I imagine if I say no, there's just going to be a couple scenes, and then same outcome. Hmm. Makes me wonder if I should have eaten that sponge cake instead.